Grow My Cleaning Company teaches owners of cleaning companies just like you how to grow your company, make more money, and finally take charge of your financial future and your life. This podcast is about automating and creating systems that give you time and money freedom so you can grow like crazy without losing control. Since this is totally free, if you're getting tons of value, want to support us and make sure that you get more of the good stuff, subscribe, rate, and review to this podcast today. Now, on to the show. Hey, Cleaning Nation. Welcome to the Grow My Cleaning Company podcast. This is Mike Camping, your host. I have the lovely Miranda Carr Pepke, who started as the owner of Miraspen Blinds and Cleaning in Johnsonville, Illinois. She started that bad boy in 2017. She does all sorts of services for residential, for commercial, janitorial, maid service, gutters, roof, and window cleaning. There was more, but I got tired of writing it all down. Uh, she started the business because she was tired of working for the man. She wanted to be the man. From the looks of it, she's failed miserably because she looks uh, very woe man <laughs> as opposed to man, but we'll, uh, we'll, we'll dive into that. Uh, Miranda, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Glad to have you, sister. So before we dive into the good business stuff, give us one little known interesting fact about you personally that we can enjoy slash make fun of slash be impressed by. Uh, well, if you notice my plants in the background, I have a whole room dedicated to them. You're in my plant room, actually. Oh, for all of you online, we're getting a quick tour of her plant room and it is pretty impressive. It makes... All I have is walls, so I kind of feel like a jerk now. There's not a, not a living other than me and you, if you want to count you being in this room. There's not a living thing in this room but me, and you've got this beautiful... Light. So what on God's green earth made you start a plant room? Oh, actually, it's, I got I found a group on Facebook and like for trading plants. And one summer, I just kind of got a little carried away. And the next thing I knew, my porch was full and winter came. And I'm like, where am I going to put everybody? So into my, you know, plant room, they came. I love how you start with a plant trading website, but clearly mm -hmm. you've been spending more time plant hoarding web. Probably so. To give a plant, to get plant. Looks like you've been getting more plants than you've been giving. I, I, oh, propagating. I have a lot of plants you can just grow by a leaf. A lot of plants you can what? Just grow by a leaf. Okay. So you like just grew yourself, which I guess is, yeah, I have no, uh, that sounds, yeah, my wife and I are very good at killing mini living things, other than our five-year-old and our dogs. They've survived, but plants have done well under our care. So we'll, we'll have to do off, off, offline. Miranda's going to have to tell us how to stop uh, killing all the things that are trying to thrive in our, in our little house. All right, um, let's dive in. Uh, for all of you, I know most of you are here wanting to hear plants and how they grow and when they grow, but there's maybe one or two out there that are like, hey, can we get some cleaning company action? So for you guys let's and gals, let's jump into that. Uh, Miranda's, uh, what's your question for today? How can I help and serve? Um, well, I would like to figure out, I'm, I do a lot of cold calling. I do a lot of walking in the summertime, you know, door to door sales. I got some yard signs that I put out in a lot of places. Um, you know, I drop a lot of business cards and a lot of flyers. Um, and that does get me some, but it, it seems like for every door that I, you know, walk to and everybody that I get to talk to, maybe, you know, one out of every 100 person that I talk to might call. Um, so, you know, then I spend my whole day walking to maybe get one client, which may fall into another client, maybe, but not always. Uh, so basically, I guess I just want to know how can I bring more people to me rather than me going out and trying to find them all the time? First of all, it is so important, Cleaning Nation. The caliber of question you ask has everything to do with the caliber of answer that you get. Um, so why am I broke? is a difficult question to answer and you're going to get a low answer. Um, how, how can I get more customers is more specific and a little better. Um, how can I get customers come to me as opposed to me having to chase them all the time is even more specific and you're going to get even better answer. So I really like the quality of your question. It's going to impact the quality of the answer we can give for you and for cleaning nations. So there's two big switches we need to make. And one of it was in the, uh, introduction. It's so funny as I was reading the introduction, uh, I had coaching I wanted to give, but I've, I've learned, you know, we kind of wait, wait until people ask. And then as soon as she asks her a question, I'm like, yes, I can give her what I was hoping to give her in the first place. Right off the bat as a coach who's done this thousands and thousands of times, we've just helped just thousands of owners of cleaning companies right off the bat. If uh, you were here, um, both Miranda, my guest and you guys cleaning nation, 
not because if this was Mike's coaching podcast and I will coach soccer, I will coach baseball, I will coach eating, I will coach owners of cleaning companies, I will coach coaches. If I'll coach your dog, whatever you got, I'll coach it. How confident would you be in my ability to help you grow your cleaning company if that was my value proposition to you, Miranda? I've coached thousands of people zero to one of which was an owner of a cleaning company, but a thousand other different things with different people. And not only do I do coaching, I'll do your website. I'll, um, I'll get you clients. I'll train your employees. I'll clean for you if you need. At that point, how confident are you in my ability to change your life? Well, either you're very good at doing everything or you're very cocky. Do you believe which, which of those is likely true that I'm good at all those things I just listed, or maybe I have a inflated view of my ability to help or serve or, or do something. The latter you're maybe you have an inflated view. Almost probably. Um, certainly let, let me contrast that with the reality. What I would say, if I met you and you said, Hey Mike, can you help me? I go, Miranda, I have been doing this for six years. I have one-on-one coached well over a thousand own, uh, owners of cleaning companies. I've one on many coach tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of owners of cleaning companies. I've seen hundreds of lives change. This is all I do every day, all day, just owners of cleaning companies. That's it. I help them get out of cleaning, get client, the right clients that come to them with the right prices. I have forgotten more about how to grow a cleaning company than anyone else walking the face of the earth knows. How confident do you feel about that guy? Mm, go gotta, on. What's that? Saying, go on. Well, I'm just asking, how does, how does that feel? One guy's going, I'll coach your kid at soccer. I'll coach your dog at dogging. I'll coach anyone and anywhere at any time. And by the way, I'm good at it versus this is all I do every day, all day. I've done it a thousand times, literally. And I'm better. I've forgotten more about how to do it than anyone else knows. That does sound way better. And I know it does because you're here as a guest on not Mike's general coaching show, but my grow my cleaning company podcast. So instantly you knew I have a cleaning company. I'd like to grow. I'm in the right spot. I went and I... I creeped your Facebook page. I creeped your group. I creeped your Google. I creeped your website. Like, you know, I just had to be sure. Which is, which is great. (laughs) I am, I am me. (laughs) Might be full of crap, but I'm definitely me. I'll tell you that. Um, So here's, that's a lot about me. And you're like, I'm talking about me and I get me clients. Why are you talking about you? Let's, let's talk about Miranda. So when you go to your client and go, I clean commercial bill, I clean car dealerships, I clean condos, I clean lawyers offices, I do gutter cleaning, I do roof cleaning, I do carpets, I do upholstery, you got, I'll, you got a stain on your shirt, let me get that off. You're going to have a very tough time. I'm going, you don't do, you do everything, therefore you do nothing. However, right. if you went, if you, if your company, uh, and again, I have no idea what Maris spin blinds and cleaning is, but everybody knows what growing cleaning company is. Instantly, you know, if I have a cleaning company, I'd like it to grow. I'm probably in the right spot. If it was Mike's coaching and wondrous activities, you'd have no idea what I did. Um, I have no idea what Marispin blinds and cleaning is. I have, I don't know what Marispin is. Well, hold on. If you have to explain, yeah, I I get you could explain it, but I, or you could just have a a company name called grow my cleaning company, no explanation needed. So if your company name was Johnsonville car dealership, cleaning profits or cleaners or profit or happy maker. If I was a car dealer owner in Johnsonville, I'd be really clear on what you did. And I'd be a lot more confident you specifically could help me than mirror spin blinds and cleaning. Um, mm-hmm. Cause I have a car dealership. I don't even have any blinds. So how, right. how can you compete? Right. So if you're competing with Johnson, Johnsonville um, premier car dealership facility management, you have right off the bat, you're screwed. Right. Or if you um, are Johnsonville, you know, more time for more free time for moms in Johnsonville. I, and I'm a mom in Johnsonville right off the bat. I know who you are. So trying to be everything for everybody is a great way to be nothing to anybody. Um, I would first and foremost, get crystal clear on who you want to serve um, and what their pain is. Cause I promise you the, let's just go car dealerships and moms, <laughs> the car dealership. There's the owner, there's the general manager, there's a facilities manager. You need to know who all three of those people are, what their pain is, how to solve it, why they would hire you. Each of them has something different. And you're like, oh my gosh, that's a lot of work. If all you serve is car dealerships and you can be an expert, it's not that much work. But if you have one car dealership bid per year and zero to one car dealerships, you'll never get all that stuff, right? So I know, and I know that you 
not you, but owners of cleaning company, they want to get out of cleaning. They want to work on their business, not in it. They want to make sure clients come to them as opposed to Chase. They don't want to deal with low ballers. They want their spouse and their community to look up to them as a real business owner as opposed to just a cleaner. I, again, I forgot more about your pain than you probably even know because this is all I do. But if I was just super general and I'd be like, I don't know anything about you. You own a business. I, I've coached hundreds of other business owners, but they're, they're all random and I, they, not, not, no one has anything to do with another. So first and foremost, get crystal clear on who you want to serve. Get crystal clear on what transformation you can help make in their life um, and just be better at that than anybody. Be able to come back to Cleaning Nation in six months or a year and go, my name is Miranda. I help. So instead of offering them everything that I do, I just need to tone it down and offer them, you know, one, they have dirty siding on their house. They need to cater to that, that, that pain, right? But right. And I would ask them what their big pain is. So instead of trying to solve the one that we oftentimes we sell what we want people to buy, we can, it's just very expensive and time consuming and frustrating, much easier to find what people want and sell them that. <laughs> right. So much easier. If I was looking, I always use the dating cause and I'm married for 10 years, but it's still a fun thing. If I was looking for a date and a girl and I went to my married group at church, I'm, probably not going to have a lot of luck because right? they're not, that's not what they want. Right. They now, if I, so I, if I was going to sell something to, so if I was going to sell something to them, it'd be how to have a better marriage. But if I was trying to sell it to my single friends, that wouldn't be any good. If I'm trying to sell a date with me going to the married ladies or fellas that aren't into fellas, that's not, I'm not going to be luck. Right. So it's really important. We know I might as well just ask, what is it you want? And then try and sell them that as opposed to decide what I want to sell them and be like, you were going to buy a date with me. And she's like, I'm married and I'm 60. Why? <laughs> that doesn't even make any sense, right? right. Um, okay. So that's, there's two things. Number one is definitely get crystal clear on who you want to serve. Get crystal clear on what their pain is, right? As opposed to me going, there's all sorts of stuff that I know that you need. But on the podcast, we don't talk about any of that. When you pay me, I talk about it because you need it. But when it's free, I just tell you what the stuff that, you, that you're interested in hearing and then you see what I'm saying? So yeah, like a lot of people are like, oh, we use ecologically safe stuff, which is important. That's great. But if your clients aren't into that, you can still use it, but that's not going to be in your marketing, right? We have to be right. crystal clear on what your, your clients want. And that's what we're going to sell them uh, or not sell them, help them with. So that's step one. Step two is we are going to set up systems and processes to attract as opposed to chase. So when you don't have a niche, like we talked about, you're just kind of serving anybody. You just, like you said, you walk the earth and be like, do you want cleaning? Do you want cleaning? Um, which would be like me going, do you want a date? Right. Do you want a date? And 80% of the people I talk to are going to be in a relationship or married or um, another man or out of my, you know, to an infant. Do you want a date? Like <laughs> it just doesn't even make any sense. So to the 20%, even them that are like, I actually do want it. It's so funny. My wife's a beautiful lady before we were um, married, she was dating and guys would kind of approach her in the street and she would be on a dating site looking for a relationship, but because the guy approached her wrong, you're like, hey, you want a date? She's like, I don't know. You just like you said, we're not even in the same state. But just to spend 20 minutes on the phone, you're like, I checked you out, dude. I'm not gonna <laughs> talk to some creepy dude. And I'm not even in your in your plant room, right? I'm a thousand miles away here. Um, so God forbid I want to have a date in the same room. You're definitely gonna do your research, right? So really important that we, um, as opposed to just asking random people things, right? And now if I went on match.com, there'd be a thousand girls or a million girls, all of who were saying I'm single. I would like to date. Here's what I'm looking for. I'm of the right age. So if I bring my message of, Hey, I'm a great guy. We should go on a date to that group. Who's I know their pain. They're on match.com or whatever. I don't know. I'm so old. I'm sure it's Tinder with some other day, you know, match.com for like back, you know, a thousand years ago, whatever. They're on a dating site. They're interested in that. Right. So super important that we know who we're trying to serve. We know what they want and we're not trying to sell the wrong thing to the wrong person. Second, we do things to attract as opposed to chase. So we can't do the reason I spent so much time on the first one is we can't do the second before the first. So if I just bought a billboard that said, get a date with Mike. Here's my number. Like it probably wouldn't, you know, 99% of the people driving by that are like, I'm not looking for a date with Mike. And I'm, th I'm worried about me. If I did have a billboard that was about like, who the hell's Mike? right. Yeah. Who's Mike and why would I care? Sounds like a creeper. And you know, he's got more <laughs> money than sense to put up a billboard. What kind of psychopath is this? But if I knew what women were looking for, and I want to talk about that, like, Hey, are you looking for um, a guy that actually cares about you, a, a guy that's financially stable. I would talk to the girls that I was trying to, a guy that has this spiritual belief, right? Because that me, that that would be important. Um, and then when the person called, they're like, I'm, this is different, right? So I have to know who I'm looking for and what they want before I can have a message that's going to be interesting to them. So second, as opposed to me cold calling a bunch of people, um, 
I would find a way to attract them to me. So because I'm ridiculous, I would be like, I, I could start a podcast. Mike's looking for a wife.com. And I could have different girls on every week and be like, I'm Mike. You've heard the podcast. Why aren't we married yet? And they could tell me what a loser. It would be so, it would be super fun. And I guarantee you, if I had that podcast, I'd have way more women. And if I did it for six months, I'd have way more women that were great women because they'd all get to know me on the podcast. Coming to me, I'd get to pick and choose as opposed to me going in the supermarket, be like, hey, Miranda, I want a date. You're like, get away from me, dude. I have mace, right? Like it's, but if you're, <laughs> The same dude, if you heard the podcast that was attracting as opposed to me, like one-on-one -on -one coming after you, you might be like, oh my gosh, he's so charming. He's great. He's whatever. Same dude, just a different, just a different messaging. So A, get crystal clear on who you want. B, get crystal clear on what the pain is that you solve for them. And then C, just give them that messaging and do it in a one-to-many way. Like I can do this podcast and thousands of people are out there. And guess what? Some are going, what a knucklehead. I wouldn't, this guy sounds terrible. That's okay, right? Like if I said, hey, I'm only looking for Christian women to, to date. Jewish women or atheist women or anyone that hates Christian would be like, what a, that's how, blah, blah, blah. that's okay. I don't want to marry that chick anyway. Like it's okay that she doesn't listen. It's fine. So same with the content, right? If you say we're only going to do car dealers. Well, guess what? Every single person in the world that doesn't own a car dealer is like, I'm not interested. But the people that do have car dealerships are now very interested. So really important. Um, I guess the end is attract, don't chase. And you're like, well, how do I do that? Understand what they want and then offer that to them, right? So again, um, on the dating thing, if I'm offering married women date with single guy, not certainly the woman, the married the woman I want would not be interested in that. 60-year-olds, uh, infants, toddlers, people in relationships, whatever. There's so many people. If I offer them, it doesn't matter. There's just no way I can get a good message. So know who you want, understand the pain they want, make them an offer they like and do it in a one-to-many way, right? As opposed to you knocking on the door, hey, want a date? Hey, want a date? <laughs> Put a piece of direct mail out. I, there's actually, I forget the guy's name. It was an old copyright in the 70s. Took out a full page newspaper ad and wrote great copy about who he was and what he was looking for. Had thousands of women respond one ad. And I think he actually got his wife from that. So he knew who exactly who he was. And I'm sure it was the New York Times. It was some big paper. So I'm sure uh, hundreds of thousands of people saw it and only 1% responded. And that 1% mm -hmm. was way more they can handle. All right. Questions, comments, rude remarks? No, not at all. <laughs> She's like, I got some rude remarks, but I, I don't want to get edited out. All right. Um, Black, way I always like to end these. What's one question that I should have asked you and what would be your answer to said question? Mm. It's a little meta. It's a thinker. It's a head scratcher. So what one question should have I asked you or what one question should have I answered for you that I didn't? I'll let you go either way. Oh, golly. This is the part you know for all you including that this isn't scripted, right? <laughs> 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 Anything you like in the world about something I should have asked you that you'd, that you'd like to share with Cleaning Nation or something uh, you wanted to ask me that I completely missed for you? Mm, no, I mean... Not really, no. Like, like I said, I, I stopped your whole group, like, in your whole page. I watched, I, I have videos of your podcast in my YouTube watch list. <laughs> she says that like it's a bad thing. It's okay. That's you're allowed to do that. So, all right, Cleaning Nation. For those of you that are out there going, holy heck, I love Miranda. I like Mike. I want more. I, this this is for me. Uh, we have all of our stuff at GrowingCleaningCompany.com. I don't even think there's anything for sale, but there are hundreds of podcasts. There are. Uh, there's a webinar, a free on-demand training is probably the best thing that we've got. Um, everything I've spent 20 years figuring out how to grow uh, cleaning companies is growmycleaningcompany.com. Uh, I do believe we have an event coming up, growmycleaningcompany.com forward slash events, only a couple hundred bucks. It's two days. It's live. It's going to be amazing. Anyway, all the details, growmycleaningcompany.com. Check it out. See you soon. And you have a question. Oh my God. Right at the last edge. You I got know. a question. All right. I don't think we've ever kind of done out and then gone back, but this is it. You're first, okay. Miranda. What's the um, question? So... <laughs> I'm never really sure what to say on my Facebook page. Um, you think, and nobody really, who wants to sit there and read a paragraph unless you're really interested in that paragraph, you know? Um, you think if I, I don't know, but maybe when it's kind of, it's obnoxious, like making a podcast, but like going live on my Facebook, like on my business page, you know, would kind of get me a little more reach. So here's a perfect example. Perfect example we just talked about. What I hear Miranda saying is, hey, I don't know if I should go live on my Facebook page. If anyone would care what I would say, how to do it, um, which is true. But we'll solve that for you in a second. She also in the same breath said, 
I have your videos. I have your podcasts. I stalked every page that you have. So do you see the difference between we create a bunch of content that was attractive to you, right? I found out what the Mirandas of the world and the cleaning nations of the mm -hmm. world wanted. And guess mm -hmm. what we talked about? We talked about that. So it wasn't obnoxious when we go live, people eat it up. So it's a perfect example, Miranda. You're like, would I go live? Well, it depends. If I just, if all of my if again, it wasn't growing cleaning company, it was just Mike's coaching or Mike's opinion on the world.com, that would be obnoxious and no one would come. So the problem is right now, until you know who you're, I know what to talk about. I know I'm talking to owners of cleaning companies. I know what your pain is. So it's easy for me to create an infinite amount of content um, that's appealing to you guys. But again, you're like still on step three. So, Hey, can I go Facebook live? And what would I say? I'm like, no, you can't. And I don't know what you would say because we don't know who we're talking to. So you, you're trying to skip. And by the way, every cleaning company owner does this that I coach. They try and skip. I give them steps one and two, find out who your audience is, find out what their pain is and then go help them solve it. And they try to go to step three. What should I say? I'm like, I don't know, right? Who are you trying to attract, <laughs> right? Again, if I was trying to date a 70 year old woman whose husband had passed away recently, the messaging I would use that would be attractive to her would be very different than a girl just out of high school wanting to get married immediately, uh, which would be very different than someone that didn't want to marry at all, but just wanted to find a guy to travel the world with. Right. So you're like, I don't know who I'm looking for, what problem I solve for them, but what do I say? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> so you got to go through. I'm looking, I'm looking for people with dirt. So that's, that would be like me going, I'm looking for a human. That's not I'm looking for dirty windows, dirty siding, dirty roofs. <laughs> All right. So again, we're, we're going way into a uh, long, so I'm going to give, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap this all up. So again, same thing. That's a perfect example of Miranda trying to sell what she wants. I want to sell cleaning services. Therefore I'm looking for people that have dirt. That's the wrong way. Go to, you got to pick the people first and then find out what their pain is. So again, if it's moms who are busy, they might be like, if I could just have someone to do my laundry and, um, do my dishes. That's the biggest number one thing. But Miranda's selling window cleaning. And maybe they don't give two craps about window cleaning. And again, maybe elderly. So again, you you keep trying to put the, this is everybody. So I'm picking on Miranda because she's here, but this is everyone with Cleaning Nation. They go, I know who I want. I want people who want to give me money for cleaning. It's like, that's completely not what you want. I, it's not at all what you want. You want to be much more specific than that. I want moms who have two kids at home, dogs, dual income. They live in an expensive house. They have, they, they understand that the value of time for them is much higher than the value of money. They're probably college educated. They're at least in their thirties because young people are broke. They're not retired yet because they still have kids at home. They're on their first husband. They see them. They voted for Trump or they voted for um, Biden or whoever. See what I'm saying? That's the kind of specifics. So when I go, you need to know exactly who you want. That would be like me going, I know who I want. I want people who want coaching. What the heck am I going to say to people who want? I don't even, that doesn't mean anything, right? But if I go, I want people who are sick of chasing clients and want more clients to come to them they could possibly handle, that's freaking specific. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Now, Cleaning Nation, we are out. Hopefully you did it. GrowMyCleaningCompany.com if you want more. Talk soon. Thanks for tuning in to today's show. If you're fired up, ready to grow, and want to see if you have what it takes to work with us at Grow My Cleaning Company, here's what I want you to do right now. Go to growmycleaningcompany.com forward slash talk. That's growmycleaningcompany.com forward slash talk to book an appointment to speak with me personally. I'm going to jump on the phone with you to get you crystal clear on where you are now, where you want to be, and how to get you there. Don't walk around in the dark any longer. If you are serious about growing your cleaning company, it's time to finally get the systems in place that you need to grow. We've helped hundreds of owners of cleaning companies not only grow their business and their personal freedom, but give back to their community as well. If that's what you're looking for, head over to growmycleaningcompany.com forward slash talk and book a time to talk with me personally. I can't wait to get to know you and your business.